Um, but also during that time, I actually happened to live in Bill Shorten's electorate. Ooh. And this is a letter that he sent to uh, my wife <laughs> and myself, um, of which uh, caught my eye. Um, and, you know, as part of the political narrative and the conversations that are going on, what we are starting to see with parties who are pro-changes, i.e. at the moment Labor, um, the left side of Labor, and also the Greens party, um, there is this really strong narrative at both the uh, federal and also at the state level around these greedy property investors. And so you can see here, he's already says in his letter to us that Labor has already announced that it will reform negative gearing and capital gains tax to make the system fairer for first home buyers, unlike Malcolm Turnbull, who thinks taxpayers should subsidise investors buying their ninth or 10th property. So this is what we we constantly hear both through media and through the politicians trying to pigeonhole that all of us property investors have multiple properties and we're filthy rich and we live off the tax benefits that we get off the back of that. And that's what we're also going to demystify. And we're also going to try and make sure that we are changing the narrative because the narrative is really clear here that we are running small private rental accommodation businesses and so we can't, that can't be lost. There's over 2.3 million of us who are running these small private rental accommodation businesses. But how many do we actually own, Bryce? This is compelling. And I think this is really, really important because to, to the letter that you can see on the right, investor buying their ninth or 10th property, have a look at that on the stats on the left. So what you're seeing here is a table that's published by the Australian Taxation Office which is probably the most credible source of information because if you're if you're lodging um, if you're trying to um, uh, take advantage of the negative gearing system, you want to lodge that damn tax return to get the right. refund. That's it. And this is the stats that they give us. So if you go to the right hand side, you see a red highlighted spot that says ninth or tenth property. Come back to this table. Six or more properties as a property investor is a very very small percentage of the population. In fact, if you have three or more, you are an outlier. That is without a shadow of a doubt. Because what this table is actually saying is if you are a property investor in this country, you are already an outlier, number one. Yep. Number two, if you are a property investor, you are probably most likely to have one because 71% of you stop at one and add another 19%. Between those two, um, number one and number two, between those two, nine out of 10 property investors are likely to have one or two. So this is really, really important because you've got on the right hand side, you've got a politician's narrative saying there's a lot of greedy property investors. And on the left hand side, you are forgetting a fundamental um, part of property investing for every human, and that's their psychology. And for most people who are in uh, Ben and my generation, Generation X, and maybe baby boomers, we were brought up that debt is bad. We were brought up that debt is not something that you should aspire to. So just because and we can debunk that, by the way, but just because you have the ability to use a negative gearing uh, mechanism in this country doesn't mean that you're automatically going to go, all right, then well, if I yeah. can get that, I'm going to go and get well, 10. I'm going to go and run a loss. I'm going to run a business that runs at a loss. Obviously. It takes a certain amount of risk profile for someone yeah. to at least have the appetite. So this is, this is a slide that we want to imprint in your mind to remember every time you hear the narrative around greedy property investors, the chances are most property investors have one. Now, I get it. There's some people who have nine, Ben. There's some people who have 16. We even know someone who's got 100, right? So I get that there are outliers, but for the majority of people who take advantage of trying to self-fund their retirement, the overwhelming majority is they've probably And they're one. still in the business of running private rental accommodation. Like, is that a, is that a bad thing? No. Should we be demonized for running a small business? So, and we'll, we'll work out later. We'll, we'll share with you later why investors invest. So let's move along now and sort of talk about this sort of banning of negative gearing 